What's going on, guys? So, we're back working on Tri-5 Chevys. Shocker, I know. You're probably surprised. Um, so what we're going to do today. I pulled some stuff out of the basement of the archives. So, when I did my first 55, I bought a parts car. And I chopped all the suspension stuff out of it. Um, and I just kind of kept it. Look, the guy started sandblasting one. But anyways, I figured instead of taking this all apart, cleaning it, screwing around, doing all that, and then the car's on stands, you can't move it, I will uh, kind of rebuild these and put them all together. Now, they're pretty simple. I think they're just riveted on the top. Yeah, ball joints. And then uh, bolted on the bottom. Unfortunately, this lower control arm's got a bit of a whammo in it. And uh, so is this one. This one's worse. So I'll straighten out on the bench and then hopefully we'll just do an alignment on it and it'll be just fine. Um, but what I was going to do is take these all apart, the control arms off, pull the ball joints maybe, and then Murr's really good at taking all these out. So I think I might just drop them off at his place. Because he's uh, always looking for some work. Um, I had boxes and boxes of junk here uh rock auto so uh, here's the list so i mean everything uh ball joints idle arm bushings oh condenser i got cap i got oh i got all sorts of stuff maybe you know i have yeah some point stuff looks like i got some shocks i assume they're tri-5 chevy stuff and what else we got there you go, total value, $246. So, we'll go ahead, I shouldn't show my address there by accident. You saw it, don't be a creep show. Um, so yeah, we can do the shocks, we can do the whole front end, all the ball joints. The only thing it's a pain to do is pressing in the control arm bushings. So I'll have to pull the press out. And I made a little piece to help press them all together, but I'm hoping I can do that in the next couple of days. Um, what else we gotta do? I gotta finish the exhaust and all that, but I mean, I figure I can kind of do that. I gotta weld in the tow boards and then do the front end. And then I gotta pick up a disc brake kit, which I found locally. So I can put that on. So the whole front will be back together, all brand new. If I get the exhaust fitting, the motors fit and all that, then I can start hanging fenders, cradle, radiator, all that stuff. Then start messing around with hoses and belts, alternator. Uh, starter wiring, you know, all those sort of little things, but get as much of it done out of the way as I can right now. So that's the plan. Be zigzagging back and forth. I gotta go pick up some uh, construction paper so I can maybe make a few templates of the tow boards. Um, so yeah, we'll rip these control arms apart. Then we gotta go actually got to get dog to the vet, get some construction paper, drop the control arms off at MERS, then come back. And I mean, I got, I don't know, I got a couple of these old floor pans or just straight steel or whatever. I'll figure something out trace out something for the uh, front tow boards. This side wasn't too bad, that side was pretty bad. So this one's just a little patch and just has to kind of get that little kind of curve down, which really isn't too big of an issue. And the seam where it's all joined together is actually nice and strong. So I can probably weld that together and just weld to my weld again, if you know what I mean. And yeah, then once that's done, seam seal it, carpet in, seats in, all that. It'll actually start going together pretty darn quick um i'm waiting on headlight buckets like the caps and like i said i got that little piece there coming so i just gotta bang out the quarter a lot of people are asking us i don't know if i dressed it in a video or not put a full quarter on this thing i hear you and i'm with you the problem is they don't make two-door sedan quarters for 56 they do 55 and 57 um and obviously 56 has its own little teardrop style uh wheel well opening whoops so what you have to do is buy a hard top skin so it only goes up to here or just wraps over this little v is in a different spot so you have to chop it up and modify it and it is one thousand dollars american for that panel so that's a lot of money you can do a lot of screwing around for a thousand bucks so that's what we're gonna do this bottom piece i think it was a hundred and a half or something so we'll zip it out put it in the back will straighten out. While well, it's all apart, I'm thinking we can just kind of pop that. Though, because that's really real dent. The rest, we can load with the filler and be done with it. Fix the door. I mean, there you go. Rough body work, the whole thing. Go from there. 
So that's what we're gonna work on. Kind of rambling, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, yeah, I'll start taking these control arms all apart, grind all the rivets out and all that sort of stuff, and then uh, drop it off with Murr. Cause he needs a project. I fast forward a little bit. I dropped off the control arms with Murr. I pulled out, this is the old pan from uh, Square Body when I bought uh, two of the same ones, like an idiot. I just took some of this masking paper and I kind of basically kind of roughed out what I wanted and cut it out of this floor because I figured that's some good steel to use. Um, I then cut out the old rotten floor, which when you see how it's folded up, there was not much left there. And I got this new piece in, so it's about like that. I uh, still obviously just rough cut. So I'm gonna grind that on down real good. I'm gonna end up welding it along the bottom to the new metal and up the side of the tunnel. And then I'll just kind of zip it around the corner and weld it in on the back side. There's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'll have to do is this little brace, which is now loose. Once all the new metal's in, I'll just kind of give it a couple of buzzes on both sides and that'll be it. Pretty simple repair. So I'm gonna get it all kind of going on that and then the other side's a little bit worse, unfortunately. I'll need a little bit more metal. It might be a couple of patches depending on how that end piece rolls. And on that side, I have the high low beam switch, which on these stupid tri fives, I'll probably just cut it out. They actually come through the bottom of the floor. I'll show you on the other side, but I always just put like one out of like a Chevelle or Nova that just screws in on the top. The connectors are all the same. It's just a stupid design and it has the e-brake and this one, it's funny, it's like a series of cables. So the cable goes out into a little wheel, down into another wheel, and then back. So those may have to be cut out and just tackled it back on. But once I get that done, then I can start seam sealing because we got all new floors, front to back. And I weld across the back, I weld it on here. Yeah, I'll also double check it. I like to do that and then double check the body mounts and then put the carpet in. Let it sit and kind of relax for a day or so. Yeah, she's really, really coming together. All right, I'll get grinding. Uh, okay, well, I finished up the floor there on the one side. I seam sealed it, put a coat of paint on, so it's a little shiny. Um, and then I tried to make the front look nice. That's me all covered in carpet. This, again, you probably won't ever see it because you'll have an inner fender, which actually goes right to here and covers the whole outside. But, uh, it looks all right. You might actually see the tunnel and stuff, so maybe I'll get another coat of paint there. But I'm happy with it. I got the one side done. Uh, got a bunch of screw around tomorrow. But I'll see if I can maybe get this side done tomorrow. It'll be pretty sweet. See where Murr ends up with the uh, control arms. This one I'm talking about the e-brake. <clears throat> I should be good, should be in the strong metal. And that's the uh, high low beam. So I'll probably peel that out. Same thing, all new patch in. Seam seal it, weld it, well weld it and seam seal it. And then collar done. And once I get the floor done, I'll give it a quick paint. Then I'll probably uh, start pulling the front end apart on this thing. Uh, they're a little different, the way you gotta do these ones. Uh, you end up putting a big uh, all thread rod through the shock tower, or where the shock would go through and kind of compress it and stuff. So I'll show you guys how to do that. I'd like to get that all apart, maybe get the disc brakes. Hopefully, uh, we're gonna get the control arms done. I'll paint them, put in new bushings and ball joints, and then I mean, it's a lot of work having all the stuff all apart and everything. But ultimately, once you have it all, uh, it's kind of one day slap it all together and I'll have a brand new front end disc brakes. And I still got to finish that one header because it does hit on the steering, but then it's uh. Front clip back on. I mean, I got brakes and all sorts of other things, but yeah, that's our leaving for a night. See you guys tomorrow. All right, another day out in the garage. Uh, I picked up these control arms from Murr. Uh, you know, you gotta you gotta get these old senior citizens working, right? Like uh, keeps them young. So in my mind, employ a senior. So, anyways, um, the plan is pretty simple. I'm just gonna wire wheel them real quick and paint them black. Then I'm gonna have to make a piece to install the bushings. 
The upper is pretty simple. You just got to put like a piece of pipe across. So when you press it in, you're not folding the control arms. The lower are uh, slightly more work because you need the piece that runs across as well as a couple of little shims that'll kind of go in there to hold these ears from folding in half, which is a pain. Oh, and this one is bent, so I have to debend it, but I'm not too worried about it because it folded. I mean, that's a nice strong piece. Nothing got really tweaked, so I'll just heat this up with the torch real quick, fold her out straight, and uh, she'll be good as new. And then uh, that's when I had sandblasted a while ago, so yeah. Clean them up, paint them black. Um, these control arms are fighting me. Uh, I got them somewhat painted up so they look uh, good enough. I put one together, this upper. So it's pretty simple. You just got to put this little bar in and then press the bushings in. Um, here's what's been fighting me. I broke my freaking vise. Huh, I've never done that before. It broke the jaw right off the back. So anyways, like I was saying, you gotta have something between the uh, the control arm. So I just, this is an old drive shaft I had. I rough cut a section out and then I cut this. And the reason being, this will now fit between there. And I can still take this piece out once the cross shaft is in. So I think I'll set up the camera, do one real quick. I've done this before on a previous video uh, when I did my 55 Chevy. I read it all. I think I did a pretty in-depth one. I'll show you in this upper. It's pretty simple. Uh, we'll just press it in. I'll do the bottoms, the lowers. I'll bang the ball joints in. If I take a break for supper, I don't know if I'm gonna take this thing apart or not tonight. These tri fives are a little bit different. How they all come apart, and I gotta make a tool. Never ending making a tool. But I kind of would like to have the new front end on, and then maybe tomorrow I'll do the the disc brakes. I don't know if I just jinxed myself there. Uh, okay, I'll set the camera up. We'll jam that one together, and then I can struggle on these ones on my own. It'll basically be the same thing. You'll need the cross brace in there, and he's got to add a couple little shims in there. But uh, fun times. All right, so we're at the press. So we have our control arm. I've already jammed this piece in. I mean, it's just, it's loose, but you got to just kind of press it in there. Um, this is the bushing we're going to put in. So pretty simple, you just get it kind of started. Now we're going to use two sets of sockets. There's one on the bottom, which is going to fit around the bottom side of the control arm. The top one, the bushing, it's rubber, and then it has this little steel piece. The socket will fit right over it, fit right over that. Get her kind of lined up. Now the first one you can put in without the cross shaft in, on this car anyways, I don't know about all cars, but drive fives. Kind of straight. Okay. Now, as we're going to uh, compress it, this control arm is going to want to fold these ears in. That's what the drive shaft is going to help. Hopefully. There we go. The one side in. This could go a little bit further. Use the old socket hammer, knock her in. Now we want to put this cross shaft in so it goes through. This is open. So it fits in just like that. So now we have it in, if you can see that or not. And we're kind of, you know, loose up top. Grab our other bushing. Same thing, get it kind of started. So there we go. Pop this in there. Sock it on. Gentle, gentle. This little press, I think it's a 10 ton. I got it from Princess Auto, so like Harbor Freight. I think it was like on sale for $100. Worth its weight in gold for doing stuff like this. Nice and easy. You can do this in a vise. I've seen Murr do it. But uh, 
wasn't for me. There we go. Sockets out. Drive shaft piece out. There you have it. Installed. So just that simple. Um, these can be pretty wore out. So I have in the past. Remember always saw me just put a couple of tack welds in there just to hold it. Well, that's that. I'll probably give it a quick blast of paint now and finish off the inside. I didn't really do much to it. There we go. I'll uh, I'll get the lowers done. Same idea. And then uh, we'll bring it back. All right. Well, uh, these lower control arms spot me. I'm not going to lie. Got that done. Had a little something to eat. Anyways, the car is now up on jack stands. Control arms are all together. So bushings are all in. Uh, all new ball joints are put in. So that's good. So these are rebuilt. Brand new rebuilt stock. Now... Typically, on, well, almost everything I've ever done, when you take apart uh, the front suspension, you break the ball joint at the spindle. These Triumph Fives are a little different. I've done that before. They don't tend to go back together as easy. So, what you actually do is you remove the shock, and this has your typical shock through the coil, and it's held on with your studs up there, and the lower control arms are bolted. Two bolts to the front of the cross member, two bolts in the back. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the shock out and replace it with a little tool. Now, originally I actually borrowed this tool off a buddy of mine who built it and I mangled it. Sorry, Ray. But uh, I built another one, so I don't know where I put his. Anyways, all I do is I strip the threads. So what you're basically gonna do is replace this in the shock. This will fit where the shock tower is. And as you tighten this nut, it'll act like it's compressing the shock absorber, which will in turn uh, take the load off the spring. So you'll put a little bit of, of tension on it. It'll kind of hold it. We'll have the floor jack under it for safety. We'll undo front bolts, back bolts, and then as we let it down, we're actually going to let the front, or whatever, inside of the control arm, do this. And then the spring will come out or lose all its tension. We'll take those two bolts off, slide it over, the whole mess is off. So it'll come off in one big piece. Uh, control arm spindle and everything all together um, so all I'm gonna do is that tonight then we're gonna paint all in there behind the uh, control arm and then yeah tomorrow I'm hoping I'll grab that disc brake kit uh, buddy has it in stock it's gonna pay up it's uh, 300 bucks or something like that but it doesn't come with a master and doesn't come with a metering block so I gotta buy one of those but you know I haven't pulled the wheels on this so Tri-5 Chevys typically have uh, ball bearing, wheel bearings, which are junk and very expensive. These are wore out. And the drums are typically pressed onto the bearing, so it's a nightmare to do. Um, a common upgrade on these, which I actually did on the 57, is, uh, I don't know, they're 60s, early 60s full-size Chevs. It has tapered roller bearings. So you can buy all that stuff, but I don't have it. So the disc brake kit comes with new bearings, all that sort of stuff. It's just the way to go. It's pretty cheap, and then ultimately we'll have disc brake front end. So, we'll do that, take it apart. All I'm gonna do is paint the coilovers, or the uh, coils, sorry, hopefully they're not uh, mangled. I think I actually have a spare set in the basement if I need it. And like I said, I got uh, a new set of shocks in there, front and back. So we'll put those all together, slap that together, and then I just gotta fit the header, finish the motor mounts, uh, I welded the one side floor. I gotta do the other yet. I don't know if I'll film that or not because that's lame. And then everything should start to be able to kind of go back together. So yeah, I'll take us apart and we'll go from there. All right, so I'll show you how this works. Um, you don't actually need this to take it apart. I just do it for, for safety. So rip the shock out, put this through. It's now loose, so we can uh, basically take it right out at this point. We have all the bolts, well the nuts I should say, the lower control arms removed. A little tedious. And now we'll do the classic drop the uh, jack down. Whoop. And uh, let's see where this goes. This piece might be in the way. All right, ready? Thank you. 
front's not coming down. It's a bit of a schmack. There we go. Gentle. Oh. Okay, we got the back down. Um, I'm gonna need two hands for this. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. The uh, just the one bolt got caught on the lower control arm. So now you see we're basically apart. And uh, let's let her all the way down. Hopefully, it won't blow out. Gentle. And there we go. So same but different. That's just kind of how you do these try five springs now that's all loose obviously uh, I gotta fight out the uh, spring real quick or I can actually just undo these two bolts or these nuts the whole thing will come off in one big mess so I'll do that uh, chop that brake line out uh, the other thing which I like to do when I put these back together just for kind of safety and a little bit of alignment so they're pretty good sized bolts a uh, half inch wherever they are but uh, I put like six or eight inch just three eighths bolts because, I mean, right here, there's almost no load on it. You get just a couple inches. You can then put a few bolts with nuts on them. And it's going to guide it up where you want it. And if anything all goes to hell, it's not going to blow up and kill you. So, I'll get this off real quick. I'll show you what it looks like. We'll give it a quick uh, shot of paint. Do the other side. And color for the night. Really see how hammered this one is, eh? Whoa! There you go. All off in one piece. Got my fingers, didn't die. Springs under the car. So I'll, uh, I guess through the other side, I'll give her a quick coat of uh, black paint, and then uh, that's it for a night. And I will see you guys tomorrow to uh, do the exact same thing but opposite with new parts. Oh, what's going on, guys? Uh, it's the next day. I'm not gonna lie, I did a bunch of work. Uh, I didn't do any last night, like I said, I was going to, so I came out. So today, um, I think I had the control arms in a lump, so I took them off in a lump, uh, both sides, I don't know where that side went, but, uh, anyways, so I painted up in there, so it's, whatever, black. Put these on, uh, the uppers, I had to take apart the spindles, which was a nightmare, I did all the backing plates and all that stuff, which was just trashed, so I did that, I got the springs out, painted them uh spindles and these are the uh steering arms so i painted those two those those just kind of go on after so i'm gonna start putting the front end together and uh, go from there i also ponied up so this is the uh brake kit so disc brakes and this is just a proportioning valve metering block whatever you want to call it but actually the local speed shop just gave me because i spent enough money there i guess um so yeah i think what we'll try and do is maybe i'll set the camera up and we'll i'll put the spring in and i'll use that tool to zip it up real quick and this is what i do like i said basically <clears throat> there's no spring in here so it's very easy but the springs me in there obviously it's gonna be in our load so what you'll do is you'll get it up this is hard to do one-handed but i'll basically get it like that and then you can put a nut on the bottom that way, worst case, if something blows up, the jack falls out, the bolt breaks, whatever, at least it's got some, uh, a little safety. And I also run the floor jack under it, just, just to be extra safe, because coil springs scare me, I'm not gonna lie. You should be scared of them, too. Uh, then once that's done, you take the tool out, you jam a shock back in, and you're golden. So I want to get that taken care of. Then these brakes actually do have a little bit of screwing around, you got to pack all the bearings, uh knock all the races and stuff in the disc i don't know if they're in or not do all that screwing around and there's a little bit of screwing around to do with the backing plate i forget this is the speedway kit which i put on the 55 which i really liked that right stuff kit that i put on the 57 i didn't enjoy so we'll see uh like i said where i want to put the metering block and i think i have a master downstairs but worst case i'll find something to work out so I'll get set up, we'll get the camera going, and we'll see if we can get this in without uh, dying. Okay, so we got the tool in. Uh, got a little bit of uh, tension. 
on the spring, which you might have to kind of cram in there, make sure it's in a little pocket. And we'll put the floor jack under it, just to kind of be safe. So the floor jack's going to take a fair amount of it up, almost to the point we can get this uh, long bolt started. The problem is there's enough uh, energy in the spring that will actually lift the thing off the jack stands. Okay, so now we got our long 9 16 the washer and a nut, so if it all goes to hell in a handbag, hopefully we won't die. Now I like to have the floor jack under it, just in case, now we're just going to center home the impact. Floor jack up here. So now we got, you can't see, but there's two bolts through, so we'll just put on our nuts, just so it has something to hang on to. Now we got two in there, we can take out the safety one. Put the factory one back in. Alright, so both sides are together, uh, suspension wise. I still gotta do the steering, I think I'm gonna leave that for tomorrow. I have inner and outer tie rods. I don't know if I have the bushings or not to do the center link and stuff, but whatever, we'll do what we can. Anyway, so it's getting late, but I wanna get some of these brakes done. So it's pretty simple. You take everything off the spindle. Actually, I can show you here. So this is the complete kit. Now there's four bolts. Two at the bottom to hold the uh, steering arm on. These ones are just holding the kind of backing plate and all that for the drums. And then this big bolt here goes through and that's what holds the uh, wheel cylinder. So anyways, 
we take that off so that's where the wheel cylinder would have been bolted so this is the bracket now i heard a bunch of flack on this last time i did this this does mount the caliper on the front which is strange but it's the way it is so it's pretty simple it uses the upper uh, mount for where the wheel cylinder would be and then two bottom bolts you don't leave that there's no backing plate very simple now before we go any further step eight uh yada 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 since the calipers mount to the front side of the spindle the right side caliper will mount on the left side uh there you go so you flip them so that is right so i've done this side quarter to midnight gonna work tomorrow um so here it is done now you know the disc come you pack your bearings you fill that full you have the the mount it's very simple it just uses like chevelle style i mean everything every gm ever but uh you just put on the sliders you're done it does give you a new tab because now your brake line is going to go to the front of the chassis instead of these back ones and i mean that's uh that's pretty much it it's pretty simple it comes with new brake lines like hydraulic hoses and stuff so that's that i've made a hell of a mess I'll probably jam that one together, and then uh, I'll just see you guys tomorrow. i got to clean up in here because there's just stuff everywhere. But I'm thinking tomorrow, uh, get that done, knock the uh, the tie rods off at least, just so I can put that back together so I can steer it again. Uh, I think these are the same brakes I had on the 55, so 14-inch wheel should fit. It might be tight, but I'll put all that back together. I have yet to tighten all these bolts and cotter pin them. i got to do that. But, uh, let's job tomorrow. You know what? Everything's a job for tomorrow. I'm done for the night. I'll see you guys tomorrow after work, though. Alright, next day. I'm not gonna lie. I've uh, did a little bit of screwing around the garage. Cleaned up a little bit, so... We got some room. Um, I did toss on this side of brakes. So they're ready to go. Actually, I have the old stuff outside. I wanted to show you the junky bearings. So this one now has the, you know, taper bearings, which are good, all repacked with grease, all brand new. I got cotter pins, grease fittings, everything is ready to go. I don't have the bolts in yet. I was just giving them a quick paint. These are all a little for the bushings. So we'll get those in. Uh, before you tighten those down, you want to weigh the vehicle on. So I'll re-rig it so that the jack stands are under the front suspension I'll probably hang the front clip and all that but uh so these are the old bearings we took out so they're like a legitimate ball bearing one so they're junky they tend to crack and break and screw up and they're like 40 bucks a bearing or 50 bucks a bearing type thing so you start replacing those uh if you do all the bearings you're at least 150 bucks in the front end the drums here, I think, are 80 bucks a drum. And then you got shoes and you got to do wheel cylinders. And at the end of the day, you have a rebuilt system with a single pot, single pot master cylinder, which is junk. So it's actually almost cheaper to do this. And this is, like I said, the Chevelle truck. It's all the same junk. Easy to get parts for. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the, uh, we have the tie rods loose. I'm going to take those apart, count the turns, put new tie rods in so i can steer this thing and uh, i just got back from mers look at this he gave me a brand used vice made in england so you know it's good the old canadian tire one which mer actually bought this for me Just didn't work out so that's scrap iron i got this brand new one so i'm stoked on that so we'll probably have to i assume heat the uh tie rods up work them out and go from there and uh yeah, put the new ones in, slap it up together, and at least it can be steered around. I think that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. When we come back after I get this on, we got to run some brake lines. Uh, what else we got to do? Finish the floors, bunch of screwing around, but fix the headers, make them fit, cobble together some sort of exhaust. There's a lot of stuff to do, but uh, yeah, put shocks in. I think that's where we're going to leave it here, though. I think we did a fair bit, and uh, I don't know. I don't want to mash too much together, but I'm pretty stoked on that. This is a job that's very labor intense. Like I said, not a lot of money. 250 bucks. You got a whole new front end, and the brakes were 
300. I think I got so, so like for 550 bucks, you now have disc brakes, whole new front end, tie rods, bushings, the whole deal, and shocks. Like, spend the money, guys. Okay, so we got the one uh, tie rod out, inner and outer. Um, here are new outer and new inner, pretty simple, all Moog stuff, name brand. Now, before we jump down my throat, these two pieces here are cheaper together than just buying this collar which drives me absolutely crazy because the collar is like you know 50 or 60 bucks for a new one so we're probably going to break these bolts with my luck and then we'll wire wheel it we'll paint it black we'll clean the threads out of it and jam it all back together now when we do that we just want to make sure we count the number of turns out for both of these so we keep the alignment close ish so that's what we're going to work on. So there it is, all restored. So this is the other side, but that's what we start off with. That's what we end up with. A uh, little never season there. I'll wipe that off. I'll probably clear coat the whole thing. Um, so this is the old tie rod. And you can see it's got quite a bit more threads than the new one. But if you can tell or not, see where it gets kind of dark and dirty. So we're pretty close to lined up. So we should be happy. So this one, it's a little hot there still. Uh, put some new bolts and nuts in it. Whatever. Slap that back in. Uh, just gotta put the grease uh, nipples in. There you go. Uh, maybe I'll set the time lapse up. We'll do this one real quick. Again, if you're using the torch and stuff, just uh, screwing around, taking it all apart just to get that one little sleeve. But yeah, get after it. Check it out. So you got tie rods on, uh, just just loose. So these might have to come off yet because I haven't done the center link. There's a couple bushings in there. I might do. I gotta kind of check them out first before I do that. I want to make sure the headers fit around the steering with no issues. I put all these uh, whatever washers on. So the way these work, you tighten the washer into like the little serrated part of the bushing, and it just kind of clamps the rubber. So you want that again tightened in like a neutral position. Okay, we're all together. The brakes are looking good. Look at that. This is a hard fought few days. Not a whole lot of money, and it makes a world of difference. And I mean, all this stuff was original. Uh, factory riveted in ball joints and all that sort of stuff. So you can tell it's never been done before in its life. Who knows how many miles it had on it, anyways. And uh, these are the things that really make a big difference in a car when you're driving it. And it, you know, it's just nice to drive. So that's where we're going to leave it. If you made it this far already, you might as well click the subscribe button. Tell your friends, leave a comment below. Love reading all those. Let me know what you think of the, the choices I made. I know a lot of people want me to go straight axle and all that. You know what? It just ain't for me. Again, this car is going to be for sale. Uh, so what we're trying to make it as nice as it can be for the next guy. There are some diehard drum brake guys out there I heard in the comments, which just seems crazy to me. I mean, uh, I would have gone drum brakes if it was cheaper. But uh, in this case, it was cheaper and a better system, so you can't go wrong. But that's what we're leaving for today. Uh, I'll be back at it tomorrow for a new video. We're going to do headers, run some brake lines. I thought about what I'm going to do for that. I got some kind of cool ideas. And yeah, we'll see if we can get it all kind of plumbed up. See you guys in the next video.